Welcome back everyone. Today I'm sharing an easy dessert that you do not have to turn your oven on for. This is Crock-Pot Peach Cobbler. I love a good dessert in the summer, but I am not a fan of turning my oven on. So we're gonna be using the Crock-Pot. You're going to need some really delicious ripe peaches, some cornstarch and cinnamon, this is going to get mixed in with our peach mixture, sugar, flour, some vegetable oil because you do want to make sure to grease your crock pot, some cold cubed butter, some more cinnamon, some baking powder, some sugar to get mixed in with the topping mixture, salt, ground nutmeg, and I'm going to show you how to make buttermilk so you don't have to buy it. So first, let's peel and slice our peaches. Peaches are in season and they are so delicious right now. As for the buttermilk, it's pretty easy to make. I have three quarters of a cup of whole milk and then three quarters of a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. You just mix it up and let it sit for a few minutes and there you go. Now we're gonna prepare our crock pot. So like I said, you want to make sure to grease this. I'm using a vegetable oil spray. This is also a great opportunity to use those fantastic crock pot liners. And then you're just going to pour your peaches right into the bottom of your crock pot. To your peaches, you're going to add your granulated sugar, your cornstarch and your cinnamon. The cornstarch is going to help thicken up all those juices and then I'm adding a dash of nutmeg. If you are a big fan of nutmeg, feel free to add more. Give this a good stir and then we're going to let this sit while we prepare our topping. This cobbler topping is very biscuit-like. So we're going to start with some flour, some sugar, some kosher salt, baking powder, and then last but not least, some cinnamon for some extra added flavor. Give this a quick whisk. Make sure you get all those little lumps out and then we're going to add in our cold butter. Now this butter is gonna make these biscuits flaky and super delicious and I like to use a pastry cutter to do this. You can also just use a regular fork but you just want to break up the butter into the flour mixture. Once you get a texture that looks like sand or small pea pieces, that's where you want it. Then you're going to add your buttermilk. Let me take a second just to show you what this looks like. This sat for about five minutes and it does have some texture to it. It's curdled a little bit and we're gonna add this in thirds. So the goal with this is to mix it just until it's incorporated. You're going to have some lumps of butter in there. You might have a few lumps of flour and that is completely fine. And if your bowl is moving all over the place like mine was, put a damp paper towel or just a towel underneath it and that will keep it from scooting around your countertop. So I like to use a big fork to mix this all together. There's going to be some ragged bits to this dough and that is completely normal, just like any biscuit dough. And this dough smells so good because of that cinnamon. It's warm and comforting. And once it gets to this stage right here, it's all incorporated, you're ready to add it on top of your fruit. So I like to take some help with an ice cream or a cookie scoop, and it just kind of helps space out the dough. So you just wanna place spoonfuls, scoopfuls, whatever you're using, right along the top.
And then once I get all the dough in, I do like to spread out just a little bit just to make sure that there's an even layer. And we're going to cook this on high for two and a half to three hours. Once it is done, your whole kitchen will smell absolutely amazing. I do recommend letting this sit with the lid kind of askew for at least 10-15 minutes. Um, you can see that when I scooped this out, it was still bubbling and super hot. But the fruit cooked beautifully, that cinnamon and nutmeg just smelled absolutely amazing, and the biscuits were so soft and tender. My kids, my husband, they all loved this. This was the perfect dessert because this was a very hot day and I didn't have to turn my oven on, didn't have to heat up the entire kitchen, and it made my entire house smell good. Of course, we added a scoop of vanilla bean ice cream because why not? This recipe gets a thumbs up every time from the people that I make it for, so I hope your loved ones will be able to enjoy it too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. See you in the next one.